Welcome to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, the number one podcast and resource for black entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and Black Entrepreneur Blueprint was created specifically to educate and inspire black entrepreneurs to launch, build, and grow successful, sustainable businesses. Join us as we help build an economic power base in the worldwide black community by building and supporting black owned businesses. If you're currently an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, you're invited to join us each and every week here at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the BEB family and get ready to elevate your entrepreneur IQ. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 404. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and today we have another outstanding and informative show in store for you. Today's show topic is a bucket, a bottle of Windex, and a squeegee to a million dollar business. A bucket, a bottle of Windex, and a squeegee to a million dollar business. Now, on today's show, guys, I'm actually going to discuss one of the most influential conversations I had that helped lead me to entrepreneurship. And this took place back in the late 80s, early 90s, when I was first starting out as an entrepreneur. And I'm going to share this conversation with you. And I'm also going to break down the lessons that I learned from this conversation and also some lessons that I learned on my entrepreneurial journey. Now, before we get to today's episode, I just want to share a few things with the BEB family. First and foremost, I want to welcome all first time listeners to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the BEB family. Please stick around until the end of today's broadcast, and I'm going to share all my social media contact information and resource links, such as the link to my new book, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses. Also, two platforms I've created to help circulate those dollars in the worldwide black community, BeSmartByBlack.com and HireBlackFreelancers.com. Also, I do want to mention the new rebranded, rebooted BEB Academy is up. So if you need more content, resources, masterclasses, and workshops to build your business, make sure you go to BEBacademy.com. You get three days free access to all the content in the Academy. Now, today's show is sponsored by PodcasterWeekly.com, PodcasterWeekly.com. If you are an aspiring podcaster or a current podcaster and you want to build a six-figure podcasting business, go to podcasterweekly.com. It is a newsletter that comes out three times a week, but it's not your standard newsletter. On Monday, you have podcast news. On Wednesday, you have resources that will help you build your podcast. And on Friday, you'll get the links for the week for the best podcast information out there. So make sure you go to podcasterweekly.com. It is a free newsletter. Now, let's get ready for today's show topic, a bucket, a bottle of Windex, and a squeegee to a million-dollar business. And as I mentioned before, guys, um, one of the stories that really inspired me to be an entrepreneur was that of a gentleman named Mr. Joe Ragsdale. And he has an industrial cleaning company in the city of Philadelphia. Now, I hadn't talked to him in probably a decade or so. But when I was first starting out as an entrepreneur, his story was super uh, exciting to me. And it was really amazing to see what you can do when you really put your mind to it. So at that time, in my one of my first businesses, my partner and I were in a uh, small business incubator for minority businesses. So there were a lot of other entrepreneurs that were in that that same building. Now, this is before, guys, entrepreneurship and being called a founder, quote unquote, was cool. So when I started as an entrepreneur after leaving corporate America, people looked at me like I had two heads because it wasn't like it is right now. Anybody and their grandmom can become a founder. And that's not uh, taking anything away from them. It's just due to technology and also being able to start businesses right now part time and still being able to connect to your to your audience via social media and things of that nature. So when I started, if I wanted to connect to an audience, I had to run advertising in magazines, newspapers, TV and, and radio. Now you can literally sit down with your phone. You could be anywhere and you can run Facebook, Instagram ads, Twitter ads or whatever 
or just do social media posts and connect. So the, the landscape was a lot different. And I'm actually going to be talking about that on another episode. But I just wanted to give you guys a, a lay of the land when I started my business and when I had this conversation. So let's talk about some of the things or some of the lessons that I learned from Joe Rags, as he calls himself. So the first place we need to start off is the actual story or the conversation I had with him. So as I mentioned, I was in an incubator and I believe he was in that incubator or he was coming to see somebody in that incubator. And my partner and I had a conversation with him. And he started out by telling us that he had a whole bunch of kids. He had been married a couple of times and he had about 10 or plus kids at this time. Uh, right now, I think he has about 15 kids over three different wives. So he's putting in his work there in addition to his entrepreneurial game. But uh, he was telling me how he had gotten fired from a job or gotten let go. And he had several kids with his first wife. I think he had three or four kids and he couldn't find a job. So he'd been beating the pavement, looking for a job. No money was coming in and things were getting very bleak. So what he decided to do was he got on a bus. And he lived in Philadelphia, I think in West Philly. And he got on a bus. He had a bucket. He had a bottle of Windex. And he literally had a squeegee. And what he started doing was he would go down to the, the retail businesses on the different streets. And he would offer to clean their windows for $10. And that was, I believe it was $10 outside and $10 inside. But I think he started out with just $10 for outside and inside. So he started going from business to business and literally he built up a route. So on Mondays, he would end up at this location or this block or a couple blocks. Tuesday, he'd be somewhere else, Wednesday, Thursday, so on and so forth. But what he said was when he started uh, and he only took cash. So this is before all the payment processing that we have right now, before cell phones and all of that good stuff. So on his first day out, he said he got about four or five stores to allow him to clean their windows. So he made about 40 to $50 that day. And he said he was out there for about five or six hours. And obviously, when you're first starting out, you don't have your picture, your spiel down. You're not as confident as you probably would be if you were successful doing this. And he really didn't know what he was doing. He was just going by the seat of his pants, flying by the seat of his pants. And so as he continued doing this, what happened was he found out that he started getting anywhere from 10 to 20 jobs a day. So if you do 20 jobs times $10, now remember, this is in the late 80s, early 90s, that was $200 cash a day. You multiply that by five days, that's a grand. That's $1,000 a week cash money. Now, remember his situation. He was previously unemployed. He had several kids at home and his wife didn't work. And so as he continued to go out every day, he built up his daily uh, route to about 30 to 40 businesses a day that he would clean windows for. So now he's bringing in anywhere from $300 to $400 a day. And what he started doing was he started systematizing where he worked. So on Mondays, he would be in a certain area couple blocks Tuesdays another area Wednesdays Thursdays Fridays so he basically created a route and a routine and the people were used to seeing him so he was telling me that he built it up to the point where he literally couldn't do it all by himself and now here's the funny thing that that happened as he was doing windows people started asking him do you clean anything else you know we're looking for somebody to clean our, our shop during the evenings, we're looking for somebody to take out the trash, vacuum, ba 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 ba. And so now he's getting requests for additional work. So he's making, say, $400 a day times five days, that's $2,000. And I'm not even counting weekends. And he started cleaning offices on the weekends, offices or retail locations. And he started building up that business. So he literally went, guys catching the bus from his house with a bucket, a bottle of Windex, and a squeegee to now making millions of dollars as this business continued to grow. So as it grew, he started hiring people. Uh, he got a lot of commercial contracts in the Philadelphia area, and he's very well known. Now, once again, I hadn't talked to him in about a decade, 
uh, and I think his kids are, are running the business or are involved with the business, some of his kids. And like I said, I think he has like 10 plus kids. So uh, he has a lot of successors in there. But the story was so impactful to me when he talked about his, his meager beginnings, where it started and where it ended. Well, not where it ended, but where it is. And so um, it's funny, I, I talked to somebody that knows him and they said the business is still going strong, but it is a multi-million dollar business. And like I said, there's several things that I learned from those conversations. And one of the things that truly inspired me was that he, he wasn't going to take no for an answer. He wasn't going to take no for an answer. He had people depending on him. He had a wife and children depending on him. And it didn't matter how bad it looked, how bad it looked. He took something very simple, a bucket, a bottle of Windex and a squeegee. That's my startup cost. Literally, that's less than $20, right? Your bucket might be the most important thing or your most expensive piece of equipment. Jumped on the bus, went down to the retail areas, and he started once again with retail stores. Stores that had window, you know, would dress their windows, be it clothing stores, shoe stores or whatever. You got to make sure those windows are clean because people are looking in the windows and you want to have the right presentation. So that simple idea, hey, let me go down, clean your windows. They'd snatch $10 either out their pocket or out the drawer. They give them a receipt or he'd give them a receipt, a handwritten receipt for window cleaning. Bam. And once again, remember, this is the late 80s, early 90s. So if you're making, you know, a couple of thousand dollars a week back then, that's probably close to about five grand a week today. Once again, you're doing 40 windows a day, making 400 a day for five for five days. That's two thousand dollars cash money in your pocket. And literally, like he said, he would clean the windows and it wouldn't take him any more than seven to ten minutes. You know, go, he got it down to a science. People knew that he was coming. And if, if the managers weren't there, they would leave the $10 out for him. And that's how he literally built his business. I'm telling you, it probably was less than $20 that it costs for all the utensils in the business. But you can't put a price on heart. You can't put a price on desire. And that's exactly what he had. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through several different lessons that I learned from that story. And also my entrepreneurial journey over 20 plus years, starting 17 plus businesses, uh, having several four or five abject failure businesses, having a couple of good business businesses, having a couple of great businesses and then having two multimillion dollar businesses and also almost losing it all two times, but being blessed to be able to come back. So the first lesson that I want to talk about is meager beginnings don't mean meager endings. Meager beginnings don't mean meager endings. I always forget to mention this, guys. If you want the show notes, please make sure you go to blackentrepreneurblueprint.com and sign up for the newsletter. On every page of the website, it'll say either newsletter or join us. Now, the newsletter comes out every Monday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And it has all the show notes and links from the shows. So if you're in the car driving, if you're on the treadmill, you're working out, lifting weights, you're at the office and you're listening to the podcast and you aren't able to write down the links and you don't have the show notes, make sure you go get the newsletter. Go to blackentrepreneurblueprint.com and fill out your information, name and email so you can get the show notes that come out every week for each show. Okay, so let me go back. Meager beginnings don't mean meager endings. That's lesson number one. So, guys, everybody starts from zero unless you're handed a business. Okay? Every Fortune 500 company started from zero. It all started with a concept, with an idea, right? For example, in 1994 in Bellevue, Washington, in this gentleman's garage, Amazon.com was started by Jeff Bezos. He was working out of his garage, guys, in 1994. All right. Now, look at what Amazon is today. Meager beginnings don't mean meager endings. Everything starts from a concept. I don't care what business it is. 
any business that you can pick, a Fortune 500, Fortune 100, top 10 business, it all started with a concept. So just because you're starting small doesn't mean that's the way it's going to end, okay? The next lesson is, and it's very similar, starting small is okay. And like I said, everybody starts small and then grows. So if you are consistent, and I talked about this in a a different episode, the time value of consistency, right? The time value of consistency. If you're consistent over time, it's going to exponentially grow your business. If you have consistent actions, that makes sense. So in podcasting, so this is episode, what, 404, right? So for 404 weeks in a row, you've got new content from Jay Jones and Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. So it's consistency. So starting small is okay, but you need to be consistent in your actions. And that consistency builds on each other. It builds upon itself, almost like a snowball rolling down the hill. A lot of times when you're an entrepreneur and you start out, you compare yourself to other businesses that have been in the game for a long time. So when I talk to other prospective podcasters and they ask me about my podcast, they're like, man, how do you get so many downloads? Trust me, I didn't start off like this. But over time and consistency, putting out quality content, actionable steps, real talk from somebody that's been there and done it, not theory, but practical application. And what happens is I'm started small, but it's built to the point that it is now is continuing to grow. So lesson number two, starting small is okay, guys. That's the only way you're going to start small. All right. Unless you're taking over a business. Lesson number three from my conversation. Necessity is the mother of invention. Necessity is the mother of invention. Meaning that if I need something, I'm going to figure out a way to get it done by hook or crook. I got to figure this thing out because in Mr. Rag's uh, case, his wife and kids needed to eat. So he looked around and figured out what can I do? What service could I provide that makes sense for the customer and makes sense for me? I don't really have any money to start a real quote unquote large business, but let me see what resources that I do have and how can I use those resources to make money? Okay. So when you don't have many options, you're going to figure something out because you don't have a choice. The only other choice is quitting, which to me is really no choice whatsoever. So remember, a bucket, a bottle of Windex and a squeegee to a million dollar business. Everybody I'm I'm talking to that can hear my voice probably has access to those three things. A bucket, a bottle of Windex or window cleaner, whatever and the squeegee literally so there's no excuses guys so necessity is the mother of invention that's number three and what we're talking about today guys is a bucket a bottle of windex and a squeegee to a million dollar business a conversation that really helped formulate and shape my entrepreneurial dreams uh back 25 30 plus years ago whatever it was and uh, I always think about this, this conversation and I reference it because it, it came from a, a brother that started from nothing but used the resources and tools that he had to build a million dollar business. Number four, never underestimate the power of your why. Never underestimate the power of your why. Okay. Your why is the driving force that motivates you to achieve success, guys. It's your why. It takes you to places that you probably never thought that you'd be able to reach because your why is bigger than you. Your why is bigger than you. If you have a wife and kids at home that need to be fed, guess what? That's my why. I got to figure out a way to make this happen. I have people depending on me. So if your why is only trying to make money, guess what? You probably wouldn't be successful in that situation, going out there, catching the bus and, and, and washing windows or cleaning windows, because all you're doing is looking at money. You're not looking at your why. The motivation comes from your why. Now, remember the difference between inspiration and motivation. Inspiration comes from the word inspire. Those are external things, 
right? So when I talked to Mr. Rags, he was inspiring me. Motivation is from within. I can't motivate you to do anything. I can inspire you, but motivation comes from within. So motivation is getting up when it's, it's, it's 10 degrees outside catching that bus so you can clean windows. That's internal. That's motivation. It's not inspiration. So never underestimate the power of your why. Your why is powerful. And please make sure your why is not because I want to make money. Because that's the weakest why out there. We all want to make money. But it needs to be something rooted deeper than that. That gives you a foundation. That motivates you to do what most people won't do. When it comes to entrepreneurship. So that's number four. Never underestimate the power of your why. Number five. How bad do you really want it? And to me, that's really the ultimate question, guys, because people always talk about, yeah, I want to be a successful entrepreneur, but they really don't put the work behind it to make that dream come to fruition. You know what I mean? So, yeah, we want it, but you need to have goals with timelines. So if you have the desire to be an entrepreneur, you need to have timelines attached to your goals. I'm going to have my business plan done by the end of the month. I'm going to have my incorporation papers done by the end of next month. I'm going to work on my product or service the following month. In 90 days, I'm going to have that done. I'm going to start selling my product or service in 120 days. You need to have a timeline. How bad do you really want it? And that's why it's super important to understand your why. Like I said, if it's just chasing paper, then you're going to be easily distracted, especially when things don't go right. Oh, man, this isn't going right. Uh, Let me go find another paper chase so that way maybe I can make paper easier. But if your why is deeper than that, it's not going to be about the paper chase. It's going to be about why am I doing this? And you'll tend to be more successful focusing on your why. And during the last portion of today's show, I'm actually going to talk a little more in depth about your why and also uh, give you guys a couple of tips and things like that to help you be successful with your business. But let's get back to number six, which is block out the naysayers and people that don't understand. And what we're talking about, guys, is lessons I learned from talking to someone that inspired me years ago when I started my business, uh, Mr. Joe Ragsdale. And uh, block out the naysayers and people that don't understand. Remember, your vision wasn't given to anybody else. So your vision of entrepreneurship, that was given to you. It wasn't given to your your wife, to your husband, to your partner or whoever. It wasn't given to your mom and dad. It wasn't given to your brother, sister, a cousin or friend. It was given to you. So don't expect anybody else to understand your vision. And I hate to say this. Many times... People get jealous of your vision because you have the gumption to go out there and try to make your vision come true where they may not have that that gumption. And so they're looking at you, hating on you quietly, pretending that they got your back, but really in, in, in their mind, they're hoping that you fail. Who do you think you are? You know, I'm stuck doing this nine to five. Who do you think you are? You think you're smarter than me? You think you're better than me? People won't voice that to you, but I'm telling you from personal experience, it's in a lot of people's heart. They just don't, they don't relay that to you. But in all actuality, a lot of them are hoping you're fit, that you fail. They're telling you, yeah, you're doing good. You know, we're proud of you. Keep up the good work. But really in their mind, they're like, yo, I hope this dude don't make it because I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I can't do it. So be careful, guys. Blocking out the naysayers and people that don't understand. Your vision isn't necessarily to be conveyed to everybody. Okay? You don't have to convey your vision to everybody. Because once again, a lot of people don't hear. And here's a real life example. One of my best friends. You know, um, he always takes a negative attitude about some of my business ideas. So I'm a creator. I'm a creator by nature. And so sometimes I'll try a business to test it out. And so he was saying, well, how much time is that going to take? I'm talking, I'm thinking about testing a new product. 
Well, is it going to be worthwhile? How are you going to break into the market? Um, if you know, you're going to spend that much energy to only make how much money. And I had to break it down to him and I had to explain. I'm like, look, dude, if that business makes me 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars a year, that's 60, 70, 80 thousand dollars that I didn't have. Right. And I said, every business doesn't have to make you or be a million dollar business. I could have several different entities that bring in fifty thousand dollars a year. If I had three of those, that's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I'm not going to turn that down. And what he had to understand is because he's fighting himself because he had to go back to corporate America. There's if you pull the right levers, it's called leverage. So me starting a product business, I literally could do it in my sleep. So pulling the, the right levers, not doing all the heavy lifting myself, but knowing where to go, what to do and how to do it to be able to test a product. Now, it, it may take me literally five days to get everything together. That's not a lot of time and really not five full days either. So once again, guys, just be cognizant that you need to block out the naysayers and people that don't understand your vision. Because once again, it is your vision, nobody else's. And sometimes you don't want to share that vision with everybody. OK. And last but not least, number seven, just do something. Somebody's got to do something. I'd be joking. I'd be saying that to my kids and my wife. If something's going on, somebody got to do something. So you can plan until you're blue in the face. You can write a 300 page business plan. You can do sit down and do analysis. You can go and read books, watch documentaries, take courses or whatever. Until you do anything, guys, nothing happens. Everything you're doing or thinking about is supposition. It has no substance to it because you haven't put it out there to let the universe tell you what it's going to be or what it is. So all of that thinking and analyzing is great. But in order to get proof of concept and feedback, guys, you got to do it by taking action. You got to do it by taking action. And here's an example. On my Ask Jay Live uh, episode number 22, uh, there's a brother in one of the coaching programs that has a business that he started and he was saying that somebody asked him for an add-on product and he said man it was something I never thought about but that add-on product could add a whole bunch of revenue and he said it was very simple to create and so once again until you get out there and do something you're not going to get the feedback that you need to build and grow your business because once again everything that you're writing down in your business plan is a guess. It's a supposition. So until you literally have your product or service out there and you're getting feedback, real feedback, not from your, your mom and dad, brother, sister, husband, wife, cousin, friend or whatever, people that don't know you. Once you get that feedback, then you truly have something to work off of. You may find that your product is perfect or people may say, hey, this is great, but man, I wish you had this or I wish it had that. Or they may say, you know what, this idea is, is bad. And they'll tell you that by not buying it or supporting the product. So number seven, just do something. There's no feedback without you putting it out into the universe. OK, now on this last section of the show, guys, I just want to do a little diatribe or whatever. But I want to talk about how your success turns the mirror on people that are close to you, your family, friends, associates or whatever so when you're out there striving for your dream what that does is it makes other people look in the mirror they're like man this guy is doing everything he said he was going to do he's trying anyway i gotta look in the mirror and i'm not happy with what i see because i'm not doing what i know that i'm designed to do and so we're going to talk about that real quick and it kind of plays off of um block out naysayers and people that don't understand but before we get to that quick conversation, let me just share all my social media contact information and resource links. Now, everything I'm about to tell you is at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. Please utilize the website. We want the website to be the place and resource for black entrepreneurs. So I mentioned at the top of the show, my new book is out, A New Black Wall Street, Circulating the Black Dollar Worldwide by Building Successful E-Commerce Businesses. 
So if you're interested in building a successful, sustainable e-commerce business, go to anewblackwallstreet.com. Pick yourself up a copy, $14.95 for the print version, $9.95 for the digital version. Now, I also mentioned at the top of the show, two platforms I've created to help circulate dollars in the worldwide black community, besmartbyblack.com and hireblackfreelancers.com. So if you're a black product producer and you want to sell your products to black consumers, upload your product information to besmartbyblack.com. It is totally free. And you can connect with black consumers worldwide that look to buy black owned products. Now, I didn't forget about you freelancers. If you do anything on Fiverr.com or Freelancer.com, upload your information to HireBlackFreelancers.com. H-I-R-E, BlackFreelancers.com. Once again, it is free. And now you can connect with black consumers and black businesses that want to hire black freelancers. Also, guys, I mentioned at the top of the show, the new rebranded, rebooted BEBacademy.com, which is an online learning portal for new entrepreneurs and current entrepreneurs. We have all types of learning resources such as workshops, masterclasses, online courses, and resources in all different verticals, be it marketing, e-commerce, how to start your business, how to incorporate formation of your company, financing your company everything you need to know so go to bebacademy.com get three days free access once again bebacademy.com and if you need additional assistance guys building your successful e-commerce brand be it a physical brand or digital products brand go to bbaelite.com brandbuilderacademyelite.com pound for pound the best online program in the market If you're interested in e-commerce and want to build a physical products brand or a digital products brand. Now, it is a 15-week implementation program that takes you from product ideation to product creation to selling your product or service on your website and other applicable websites. Pound for pound, the best product on the market right now, BBAElite.com. Now, once again, everything I talked about, go to BlackEntrepreneurBlueprint.com. And you'll find it. Hit the learn tab and you'll have all types of resources that will drop down for you. And you'll be able to find everything I just talked about. Now, if you want to connect with me real quick, anything long, family, hit me on email. jjones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. Facebook, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Twitter, jjones001, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S-001. Instagram, I got two IG accounts. The first one is J Jones for real, J A Y J O N E S, the number four, R E A L. And the second one is Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. YouTube, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, family. You have additional content on YouTube that is not on the show. So go to YouTube, type in Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, and hit the subscribe button. LinkedIn, connect with me there, J Jones, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. If you're on Clubhouse, hit me at I am J Jones on clubhouse so once again family go to black entrepreneur everything i just said the resources and also my contact information is on there and please use the website we spent a good deal of money to create this site that has all the resources for you and hit the learn tab also before i do forget guys ask j live i'm changing the time of ask j live it's actually going to start on uh tuesday april 19th I'm going to do it at 8 p.m. Eastern. Ask J Live is my companion podcast where people can actually call in and talk to me and ask me questions directly. Normally, I do it at 12 p.m. noon on the Tuesdays, but people are working and I've got so many requests to change it to the evenings. On April 19th, I'm going to change it to 8 p.m. Eastern every Tuesday after that. So make sure you go to Ask J Live to subscribe. And I'm looking forward to talking to you live on air. Now, let me just talk about this real quick, guys. Uh, I just mentioned it before I did all of the uh, contact information and resource links. Your success turns the mirror on your family and friends. And this is quite unfortunate because you as an entrepreneur have the drive and the desire to go after your dreams and, and, and attack your goals to be an entrepreneur. And I know, trust me, it's not easy. Been there, done that you know, failed a lot of times, but been blessed to be successful overall. And that's one of the reasons is because I didn't quit. 
I kept understanding and, and learning from my mistakes. So many times your mistakes will teach you more than your successes. So your success turns the mirror to your family and friends. So if you have friends that aspire to be an entrepreneur and you're out there doing it, they look at you and they're like, damn, yo, Jay is doing it. Or, or damn, you know, Lisa is doing it, whoever, whatever your name is. And it's not just friends, it's family too. And sometimes that, that jealousy and envy comes in not because they understand what, what it costs to be a successful entrepreneur, but they're looking at what it looks like from the outside. And unfortunately, when you're that close to somebody, you may start comparing yourself, not you, but your family or friend that's now looking in the mirror and saying, damn, Jay, Jay is doing it. I should, I should have been doing it. How, how's he doing it? He's no better than me. He's not even smarter than me. You know, ba 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 ba. So be cognizant of your surroundings. People that smile at you don't necessarily mean good for you, right? And this has happened, you know, with brothers and sisters, close family members. It's happened to me on numerous occasions, unfortunately. You know, I, I've been told that some family members are, I guess you can call jealous. I don't know why, because we came from the same cloth. You know, we just took different actions and took different paths. You know, you never, and I used to tell my kids this all the time, you never covet what somebody has because you don't know what it took to get there. You don't know what it took. So you never covet what somebody has. So, you know, I've been told that, you know, oh, he thinks he's bad. And this is from family members talking about other family members that are talking about me. Oh, he thinks he thinks he's better than everybody. He's got a big house. He's doing this, that, and the other thing. And I'm just, yo, I'm just Jay. I'm just doing me. And if people would focus more on doing themselves as opposed to focusing on others, you wouldn't have this, this negativity or pushback. So I say that to say this. As entrepreneurs, there's going to be negativity attached to your success, and it's going to come from the people that you probably love the most or are the closest to. Don't let that stop you from from doing what you're supposed to do. Once again, when some people look in the mirror, they don't like what they see. It's, it's hard for them because they see everybody else progressing or they see you progressing in your entrepreneurial dreams. And they may not have had the wherewithal or the, the, the guts to go out and chase their own dreams. So they're going to end up hating on you. And once again, it doesn't have to be right in your face, but it could be behind your back. I've heard some hateful uh, and hurtful things that some of my closest family members have said about me based on my relative modicum of success. And I'm just like, damn, instead of being happy for me, you know, you smile in my face. You'll take my money when, when you need it. But then you're talking trash about me. And that's the type of stuff that you have to you got to stay away from, guys. Don't let anybody take you off your square. All right. And everybody that smiles at you don't love you or like you. OK, so remember that as an entrepreneur, you walk a path that nobody else walks. Every entrepreneur walks a different path. They have different circumstances around them, beside them and behind them. So you just have to understand that you're on this path by yourself. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let the haters hate on you. Don't let the people closest to you who pretend that they're, they're rooting for you bring you down. Do you. Do you. Take what God has given you. Just like that bucket, a bottle of Windex and the squeegee Joe Rags took and built it into a million dollars. Million dollar business. Take that. Don't worry about anybody else. People always think you're crazy until you're successful. You know, just like my buddy I was telling you about, oh, man, that, that ain't never going to work. I don't understand. It ain't for you to understand, bro. And I was just sharing it with you because you asked me about something. But it just reminded me that everything, your visions don't have to be shared with anybody. Keep them to yourself because a lot of people you share them with don't want you to be successful in real life. OK, so I just wanted to talk about that briefly, but. Hold the line. Keep pushing forward.
because I know this journey is not easy. Like I said, I've learned more from my mistakes than I have from my successes. And the whole key is being able to make those mistakes and not make them again, but level up every time you make a mistake. So don't let the mistake kill you. It may kill that business or that business idea. That's okay. Brush your pants off. Get back on it. Come back with something else. Okay, I learned what not to do. So now let's move forward. It's like it's like graduating high school. You're not going to pass 12th grade if you hadn't passed 9th, 10th, and 11th, right? So entrepreneurship is a series of, of, of classes, really. It's a learning process. So don't quit. The only time that you truly fail is when you stop. When you say, you know what? I can't do this. But even if you're having these setbacks, that's part of the game. Understand and recognize that's part of the game. And once again, don't let the haters hate to the point that it stops you from doing what God ordained or destined you to do. If you know, if you're like me and you knew in your heart a long time ago that you were destined to be a successful entrepreneur, I didn't know exactly what it was going to be, but I knew that I didn't let nobody stop me. I didn't let the negativity from my family members, from my friends or anybody else stop me because remember your vision is for you. Nobody else has that vision but you and be careful who you share that vision with. Now, before we close on out, guys, I say this each and every week, but it's true. And I couldn't do this without you guys, the BEB family. I, I appreciate the support. Please continue to share the content. Please continue to share the word about the blog, the podcast and the new BEB website. Make sure you check it out. Black Entrepreneur Blueprint dot com. Please continue to spread the word. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about us. It's about building an economic power base in the worldwide black community. Love you guys. See you same time next week. Peace.